On today's episode of the Mullet Mustang supported by Turn 14 Distribution. We noticed the gearing on the Mustang was just all wrong for the road course and the drag strip. So we're changing out the rear gears and rebuilding the diff. And we're gonna do some white line parts to activate more grip. That's our Ford Performance 410 gear set that we ordered online from AmericanMuscle.com. And they sell it as a complete kit with everything you need for the install. They sell the oils, the friction modifier, the full uh, bearings and shim kit all in one. So this will cure our weak sauce acceleration with the 355 rear gears. Going to the 410s is apparently good for like a second and a quarter mile, which is... Which, yeah, that's crazy. Kind of blows my mind, but we're going to test gonna that We're going to find there. out, right? Yep. Yeah. And we figured while we were in there, we would go with the Ford Racing clutch pack, uh, a whole new clutch pack with carbon uh, friction material. This is what they use in like the Boss 302. So this is like their top of the line performance stuff. It should give us a better lockup in the rear end. So we should be able to put the power down a bit better. And speaking of putting the power down better, we have gone, we've gone pretty much uh, the whole catalog we've gone almost all here, right? in here. We've ordered everything from White Line. This is their, their four link, sorry, their Watts link rear setup. You can see it's a uh, Pretty serious stuff. They have this diff cover with this uh, four link watt setup that the bars all go to. And basically what this does is just, it eliminates axle hop and it really lets you get on the power early. The car's just gonna wanna push the rear tires to the ground. So this should really do what White Line advertises and that is activate more grip. We've also got uh, new rear control arms. We've got um, the, this top mount for the rear differential. So the whole rear end is gonna be all White Line and this thing's gonna be putting the power down like a monster. So now I guess it's time to get started and by the looks of it, this job isn't gonna be that simple, is it? We could be here for a few days, I think, considering the fact that we've never re rebuilt a diff before, at least not on a Mustang. We've never really worked on a live rear axle car before. We've, we've got some work to do, but it's gonna be fun. It's all new and exciting stuff. Let's get to it. So we've got a lot of work to do back here. We're gonna start off by taking the rear cover off, draining the fluid, we gotta drop the drive shaft. I think there's a, a pinion pin in there that needs to be removed. Then we gotta move to the side here, take the brakes off so we can slide the axles out. And then finally, we can access all of the actual diff itself to do what is gonna be probably a, what do you think, six hour job? I think six hours is about yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's where we're headed here. As per Ford Performance's instructions, we are giving the carbon clutch pack a nice soak in friction modifier. The instructions specify a minimum of 15 minutes, but uh, the internet experts uh, tell us to soak it for as long as we can. Some guys soak it for a full day before ins installation. So this apparently just helps with uh, bed in and uh, reducing or eliminating any chatter in the rear end. So enjoy your bath, carbon discs, enjoy your bath. So this little bolt here is uh, what holds the pinion bolt in, which is, oh, microphone. It's this like sucker that goes through the middle of the diff here. So we need to take this little bolt out and then push that pinion bolt through. And then we'll be able to push the axles in tight, get the clips out of there and then pull the axles out. We've got the magnetic wand and we're pulling out the C-clip, which, which holds the axle in place. So there's one on each side. Yeah. Well, with those clips out, oh. Now, you're supposed to kind of hold it up so it doesn't smash on shit, but... Well, I wouldn't know. I've never held a uh, that. shaft this large. That is a serious shaft. There's some girth to that yeah, shaft too, PT. Yeah, some length, man. Now we've got to remove the actual diff itself. There's two end caps with four bolts. And I should be able to crack them loose. There we go. One. Two, and I've already loosened the other ones. So let's see if one of these end caps comes off. Oh, it's gonna come off. And we should mention that you mark them with a punch so that we know. Oh yeah, you probably back. can't see it on camera here, but you wanna mark these because you wanna put them back on their appropriate sides. There you go, look at that. That's an end cap. Beefy, isn't it? It takes all that V8 jam, bro. Oh, there it is, yeah, we're good. And you want to uh, put your hand on each end so we don't lose the shim stack. Yeah. 
Although I don't see a shim there, do you? Nah, the shims are on the inside oh, here. On the inside yeah. of those washer papers. There you go. Look at that. Oh, yeah. How much is that bad boy She's weigh? a beauty. I mean, I can curl like 50 pounds, so this is <laughs> like 30. So these are the shims on both sides. You want to make note what side it's coming from, and we'll measure them because we're replacing the gear itself. It may need to be shimmed differently, but thankfully Ford Racing provides shims. So we have everything we need to get the proper spec in place here. All right, Pete's letting me do some work for a change. And by work, I mean cleaning up. Because Well, Pete, somebody's got to do the dirty job here. I'm not allowed to turn nuts and bolts. I'm just allowed to clean up the mess afterwards, right, Pete? Yeah. And why are we doing this? Well, you just want to give our uh, Diff a nice clean home. It's a chance to clean up. I like that. That's a solid answer. Anytime you get a chance to clean up a mess, you should do it. All right, Eric Chisel man. You get to wear hearing protection. Meanwhile, I'm over here with the camera, no hearing protection. Well, yeah, I gotta do the dirty job. Oh, uh, yeah. So here I'll, we go. I'll trade it. So yeah, note if you're doing this job. <laughs> with an air chisel. With an air chisel, this Have is a... going to come flying out as I push on the opposite end. We should have thought of that, Let's right? Get your buddy with the catcher's mitt on the other oh, side man. and we're all set, right? We're just full of great ideas, but anyways. It's out? It's out, let's move on. Pick up the pace there, buddy, come on. I gotta make sure I do a good job here. Clock is ticking. The internet doesn't have all day to wait on your cleaning this up. All right, we've recruited Master Nam here to press out that, uh, that bearing, whatever the hell that thing is called. Well, here's the thing. We don't actually need the bearing because we're not reusing it, but there's a goddamn shim in yes. between this bearing that we have to reuse. So we got to take it off. Yes. Oh, Woo. Wow. There we go. And there's our shim. This is what we need right here. He's decided his eyes are more accurate than, my, than the micrometer. So he's trying to Pick the right shim to replace the one we just pulled out. Once you use a vernier, not even a micrometer. That, this has a chance of. So the this line? is the same as this. All right, let's see. My eye. Let's see what the, the judges said. Sorry. What? This is 0.636261. I want to remeasure on the calibration of this tool. <laughs> And this is 0.65. Okay, so let's go down the next size. Let's see. Oh no, no chance. So 6.5. Yeah, but, but we need 6.0. Well, we may, Houston, we may have a problem. You need one that's like 0.6. Well, we can just reuse the old one, but. It's 0.4, it's 0.4. So technically, I am closest. We, do, we just don't have the right shim. Close, but... We don't have the right shim. Well, we'll just reuse the old one then. I suppose so. Yeah, no. <laughs> Pressmaster Dove here has uh, I, I, I concocted want... this unique selection of. Uh... No, this is how the press Ooh, Look at this. It's like butter. We put the penetrant, so it's penetrating. And there is penetration he, happening look, here. He's got safety glasses yeah, on, yeah. looking from underneath, mm -hmm. not on his eyes. Yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's for a reason, because I can't see with the same glasses on. Mm -hmm. So check out this sweet setup to press the race in. This is why we're here at NV Auto, because they've got all the right tools. Not to get Rachel around here, but that's race number one hammered into place. And uh, there's another one on the back side that needs to get hammered in. The race drops in here, just like that. You gotta put this little bushing that goes in between, and then our uh, seal here. So I'm gonna have to tap this in again, but that will complete the front side of the differential. And now we drop the pinion in here. Slide it through, and bam. All right, now that the pinion's in, Pete's just gonna tighten the pinion nut on the back side there. Now it's on to our differential. First thing I'm gonna do is to actually take the ring gear off. It'll lose some weight. It's actually gonna be easier for me to carry around. <laughs> the 
moving? It's coming. There she goes. There she goes indeed. When pressing the bearing off doesn't go right, you cut it off apparently. We're getting serious here, real serious. Oh yeah. Holy smokes. Well, that's one way to press off a bearing. All right, PT, pull that S-bearing out of there. Not that you know how or anything. Oh, he's just going, fucking, he's just going full balls to the walls yeah, here. Yeah, that'll just, twist just you. Just reefing on it. Conan the Barbarian here. Oh, the guts oh, are out. Yeah. There you go. All right, I don't think I've done this before, but I figure it's not too difficult. You should uh, maybe remember how they go back in. Uh, Make a mental note. We'll just say this one is at the bottom. Yeah. And this one is at the top. Oh, it's so greasy. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Mm, fancy. There you go. Pull out one of these old clutch packs here. Nice. And I'm no expert, but these actually don't look to be in bad shape. Looks like they've still got some material on them. Yeah. Yeah, t typically these are, these wear out pretty fast on, you know, cars that are driven hard. And yeah, well this one definitely wasn't. I get the feeling ours was like a highway cruiser. So. I agree. So here's our Ford Performance uh, clutch pack that we've been soaking in friction modifier for, well, a day now actually. And good God, does it stink. The smell Ooh. is disgusting. Yeah. It literally makes you want to retch. <laughs> But this is uh, part of the process for rebuilding a deck. Prevents any chattering. So what we're gonna do is pretty much line this up. It looks like they're already in order. So we're kind of good to go in that sense. I think I gotta flip it this way, but yeah. So everything's lined up, ready to go. So I just split this in half, put it on the opposing sides, and we'll get this diff back together. I'm gonna attempt to put this back together here in one piece. Let's see how it goes. It's like sliding these little locks on the side in. Yeah. Kind of a pain. A little tricky. Yeah, but they're going. There we go. All right. So I'd say, ooh, she's tight. Yeah? I can feel the friction. Mm, that's what I'm talking ooh, about. Ooh, that carbon friction. Feels good. This is like a jigsaw puzzle now. You gotta line these up properly. And then whew, look at that, they just slide into place. Oh man, no, I'm off by a tooth. Buddy. Look at the friction packs, they're so tight. I can't get it to, there we go. Once you got, get a little bit of rotation, it goes. Yeah, all right. All right. We are lined up. So uh, Pete's hammering the S-Brig in, even though you're supposed to put it in a vise and squeeze it tight and then fish it in with the, uh, I don't really think so. He's just gonna hammer it in there. I'm just gonna hammer it to the point now and yep. now we need a little- For the rest of little... you who care about doing it right, uh, go search Bad Shoe Productions on YouTube. They'll show you how to do it. It's an old dude with bad shoes, but he knows how to build four diffs. Don't go too far. Nope. It's in perfectly. All right, Bad Shoe Productions. Pete shows you what's up now. Just hammer it in, that's what I said all along, Pete. See, you just gotta hammer it in. Looks like progress is being made here, PT. Indeed, I got both bearings pressed on. Now I'm putting the 411 ring gear in place here. And look everybody, we've got a guest appearance. From none other than Ken Wagon. He's gonna help us do this whole Watts length rear end here. There's a million and one pieces to it. We don't wanna be here at NV taking up the shop space all month. Real men use instructions. We brought in the heavy hitter. In the moment of truth here, let's see if I can slide this yeah, it's out right. diff in there. Okay. Oh. All right. Put the doctor, I mean the nurse, to uh, should work be really here. Flat side of this. Getting the precision instrument dialed in to check backlash. We've reshimmed the diff to try to get it within spec and we think we're there. Yeah, well, we just spent like half an hour playing with this, but as you can see, it, it looks like our end play 11. there is to around, yeah, it's at one to 11. Yeah. So 
That's right within uh, spec. So that isn't within spec because we are supposed to be between I think eight to twelve. Eight to fifteen. Eight and to fifteen. We're right in the sweet spot. Wow. So. so yeah, I think we're we're good with that. Now we'll check our tooth engagement, and I'm really crossing my fingers that it's spot on because goddamn. It's, it takes more time now to figure the shimming thing out than it does to actually remove and put this diff back in. But I, I guess that's the world of diff rebuilding, especially when you're adding a final drive and new bearings and everything. Diff life ain't easy, bro. How does so that you're look? You're getting it low on the side and the Excel side. It is kind of low on the Excel it's side, high isn't it? On the... It's high on the D-cell side. Well, it's not ideal, but we're going to live with it because to fix the the pattern here we would have to actually take everything out and reshim the pinion and we're just not willing to do that yeah so. so we have shims yes but that would literally require taking the pinion shaft out again and that has a bearing on it that has to be pressed off replace the shim press it back on we're talking we just spent two and a half hours working on this yeah so to, to redo that just makes no sense we're gonna live with it if it's noisy, if it's noisy then yeah. we can revisit it later yeah but, but I think we're okay. Let's try it out. We are cutting this episode short. NV Auto is closing, so we will be back tomorrow to finish this job up, and there's still lots left to do. What the hell's going on here? We don't have a pencil sharpener. It's way faster this way. NV Auto pencil tuning. Let us find it. Yep. We need a pro drifter to tune all your pencils.